2020 has been an exciting year for gaming monitors. With manufacturers pushing limits of high refresh rate, there are now more options than ever to find a great gaming monitor. But with so many choices on the market, it can be really tough to find the right one for you. Hi, I'm Brandon, a test developer at Ratings.com, where we help people find the best products for their needs. In this video, we'll be breaking down our best picks for gaming monitors to hopefully help you narrow down your decision. So far, we've bought and tested over 134 monitors, and we'll be listing our picks into five main categories. The best FreeSync monitor, the best G-Sync monitor, the best monitor for eSports, the best ultrawide, and the best budget gaming monitor. We'll also be looking at a few notable mentions throughout the video and a couple extras at the end. I'd like to know that we choose these monitors based off our testing, but also factor in price and feedback from the community. So if one monitor is slightly better than another, but at a much higher price, we tend not to recommend it. With that said, let's begin. Let's start with our best FreeSync gaming monitor, which is basically our best overall gaming monitor, as most monitors on the market support FreeSync. The best one we've tested is the ASUS TUF VG278Q, which excels in almost all areas. It's a Quad HD 27-inch IPS monitor with a refresh rate of 165Hz. So right off the bat, it hits that sweet spot of high refresh rate and high resolution that many gamers will appreciate. It also features a well-built stand that offers great ergonomics. For picture quality, the ASUS is an all-around good package. It gets decently bright, has good viewing angles, and has good contrast and black uniformity for an IPS panel. It also has decent out-of-the-box color accuracy and a wide color gamut, although not as wide as some other monitors we've tested. For gaming, this monitor performs quite well. Thanks to its high refresh rate, motion will appear smooth and fluid, making it much easier to track your opponents in fast-paced games. The response time at the max refresh rate is very good, but if you're gaming at 60 hertz, such as on the console, make sure to change the overdrive setting to zero or else you'll get bad overshoot. The monitor also features ASUS's ELMB sync, which means it can do black room insertion with VRR enabled, which is a pretty cool addition. Furthermore, it has a low input lag, so gaming on it will feel responsive, even for the most picky gamers. The keen eye amongst you may have noticed we didn't pick the Samsung Odyssey G7 as our best gaming monitor, despite it outperforming the ASUS in many ways. While the Odyssey G7 is a fantastic monitor that excels in both picture quality and motion handling, we've received countless reports of it having flickering issues in games and with VRR enabled. Because of all these issues, it's hard to recommend because we can't guarantee the experience you'll have with it. But if you're willing to take that risk, it's a really great monitor. Just make sure you have a solid return policy alongside it. Now let's check out the best native G-Sync monitor that we've tested. By native G-Sync, I mean any monitor that has a G-Sync module built into it as compared to those that are just G-Sync compatible. A G-Sync compatible monitor doesn't have the module built in, but it's still certified by NVIDIA to offer a baseline VRR experience with their graphics cards. However, there are still some benefits of having a G-Sync module, such as more stringent quality control testing, and they tend to have better overdrive tuning across refresh rates. Our best pick for a native G-Sync monitor is the ViewSonic Elite XG270 QG. It's a great gaming monitor that packs a ton of features. This includes RGB, a mouse bungee, a headphone hook, speakers, removable blinders, and a USB hub. On top of that, the stand has great ergonomics and good overall build quality. Picture quality is quite good too. It gets decently bright, has good viewing angles, and the reflection handling and text clarity are also good. So this monitor can also work well in an office setting. Unfortunately, its contrast and black uniformity aren't great, which is common with IPS panels, and ours had pretty poor color accuracy out of the box, although this does vary unit to unit. Where this monitor really excels is in gaming thanks to its high refresh rate and fast response time. Even at 60 Hz, we measured a pretty solid response time on the same overdrive setting, so you won't have to fiddle around with the overdrive if you swap from a PC to console often. Additionally, it has a very low input lag, like most of the monitors on this list. Now onto the best esports gaming monitor we've tested. A great eSports gaming monitor is one that prioritizes extremely high refresh rates, low response times, and a low input lag. This is so the player can have a very smooth and responsive gaming experience where the difference between winning or losing can come down to mere milliseconds. Our pick for the best eSports gaming monitor is the ASUS VG279QM. This monitor has an incredible refresh rate of 280 Hz, which is more than four and a half times faster than a traditional 60 Hz display. In addition to the high refresh rate, this monitor has an amazingly low input lag at just 1.7 milliseconds, which is virtually imperceptible. Although oddly enough, the input lag is really high at 60 Hz, 
so it might feel laggy if using it with a console. This monitor also has a great response time, so there will be minimal ghosting, and it too features ELM B-Sync to further improve motion clarity. As for picture quality, the monitor excels here too. It has a very good peak brightness and viewing angles, and we measure decent contrast and black uniformity, which is actually pretty nice for an IPS panel. It also has good gradient handling and color accuracy out of the box. The main downside of this monitor is its resolution, which is only 1080p. While this is perfectly fine for esports gaming, at this size, the pixel density is somewhat low, so text won't be as sharp and there won't be a ton of screen real estate for office work. This monitor does come in a 25-inch variant for those who want a smaller screen and higher pixel density. Although we found a smaller variant doesn't get as bright and can only accept an 8-bit signal, but neither factor should be a deal breaker for gamers. We also purchased and will be reviewing the ASUS ROG Swift PG259QN, which is a 360 hertz monitor. It has a very good chance at dethroning our current esports champion, so make sure you check out our website for the latest results on that. Now let's change things up and check out the best ultra-wide gaming monitor. An ultra-wide is a monitor that has a wider aspect ratio than normal, usually around 21 by 9. These are great for feeling immersed into your games as it takes up a wider field of view. They're also great for productivity as well, since you have plenty of space to move windows around. Our pick for the best ultra-wide gaming monitor is the LG 34GN 850B, which has a 3440 by 1440p resolution, a 160Hz refresh rate, and an IPS panel. This creates a nice balance of productivity for when you're working hard, and a great gaming experience for when you're hardly working. The stand has a decent build quality, but subpar range of ergonomics, although that's not too important for ultra-wides. There's also a USB hub on the back, which is always appreciated. For picture quality, the peak brightness is good, and the viewing angles are also favorable, thanks to the IPS panel. The contrast leaves a bit to be desired, but at least the black uniformity is decent throughout the screen. Our unit had great color accuracy out of the box, and the panel has a very wide color gamut, along with excellent gradient handling. So you can enjoy some HDR content on here, but the picture won't be bright enough for most enthusiasts, and it lacks local dimming. As for the gaming performance, as expected, it's excellent. It has an amazing response time at both the max refresh rate and 60 hertz, so you won't notice much ghosting if connected to a PC or console. Likewise, the input lag is also superb, so it won't be perceivable to basically anyone. We've also tested the LG 38GL950B, which offers a higher refresh rate, 1.1 million more pixels, and a larger size for a more immersive gaming experience. However, it's significantly more expensive, so it should only be considered if price isn't a factor for you. For those of you who want the ultimate in immersiveness and productivity, there's the coveted super ultra-wide monitors. These monitors are quite insane, as they're basically two standard monitors combined into one, making for an extremely wide 32 by 9 aspect ratio. The only two gaming super ultra-wides we reviewed are the Samsung CRG9 and the Samsung Odyssey G9. Both are great gaming monitors that offer excellent picture quality and motion handling. The contrast is good thanks to their VA panels, and peak brightness is amazing in both SDR and HDR. The viewing angles aren't great, but since they're both curved, this isn't much of an issue. They also both have a wide color gamut and amazing gradient handling, so either will be an awesome pick for HDR games and movies. Between the two, we'd recommend the CRG9, since it offers a very similar experience at a much cheaper price. That said, the Odyssey G9 is still a good pick if you're willing to shell out the extra cash for that smooth 240Hz motion. It's worth noting that both monitors have been reported to exhibit flickering issues similar to the G7, so buyer beware. Now onto the best budget gaming monitor, for those who want to experience glorious high refresh rate gaming without breaking the bank. Our budget king is still the ViewSonic XG2402. Don't let its somewhat outdated design fool you, this thing can game. It has a refresh rate of 144Hz and a very fast response time of just 2.9 milliseconds. At 60Hz, the response time is slightly slower, but still very solid, so it's definitely usable for console gaming. The input lag is also pretty good, and shouldn't be noticeable or distracting. For a budget monitor, it has a very solid stand with a wide range of ergonomics. The monitor also features a USB hub and speakers, which are really nice to have at this price point. So what's the catch? Well, this monitor is using a TN panel, which although good for response times, really hurts its viewing angles and contrast, which aren't good. Additionally, it has poor black uniformity, but other than those three downsides, the rest of its picture quality is good. It has a decently high peak brightness, great color accuracy out of the box, and good reflection handling and text clarity. So if TN panels don't bother you, 
this is a great budget pick. If you're looking for something on a budget with an IPS panel, there's a few IPS monitors on the market that are 24 inches and 144 hertz, such as the AOC 24G2U. We haven't tested any of these monitors yet, but if you'd like to see us test one, make sure to vote for your pick using our voting tool. Before ending, I'd like to go over a couple noticeable mentions. First, there's the Dell S2721 DGF. While it may not beat out any of the previous picks in any specific use case, it's still a solid overall package. It has a good picture quality with a solid build and a wide range of ergonomics. It has a high refresh rate of 165 hertz and is a Quad HD IPS panel, which hits that sweet spot that many gamers are looking for. Its only major downsides are its relatively low contrast and poor black uniformity. And no best monitor list would be complete without mentioning the LG C10 48 inch. It's a high-end OLED TV that can also double as a large monitor. This TV offers the ultimate in picture quality with perfect contrast, amazing viewing angles, an ultra-wide gamut, and per-pixel dimming. It's also no slouch with gaming either, thanks to its 120Hz refresh rate and near perfect pixel response time. This TV is great if your setup and wallet can support it. However, there are a few caveats to be aware of. OLED displays can experience burn-in over time, so make sure you take the proper precautions to mitigate these issues. You can learn more about our long-term investigation into OLED burn-in here. OLEDs also struggle to render text clearly because of their unique subpixel layout, although this can be improved by changing the scaling settings in your OS. So that's it. What do you think of our selection? Have you bought one of them? Let us know what you think below. As always, you can check out all of the measurements on our website. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel or become an insider on the website for access to our latest results first. Also, we're currently hiring in our offices in Montreal for various positions. So if you want to help people find the best products for their needs, have a look at our careers page. Thanks for watching and see you next time.